Welcome back. In keeping with our Women's History Month and the opportunity to feature amazing women doing amazing work, I am yet again so grateful to introduce you to another dear friend who is doing amazing things in the world. Emily Barras is the founder of Bold Story Press, and she is specializing in women's voices and getting women's voices heard in the publishing world. After a 32 year career, very successful career in publishing, she realized in the middle of a pandemic that it was time to start something new. And that something new was to feature women who had stories to tell and stories to share and things we needed to hear. And in the last 31 months, Emily has published 26 books through Bold Story Press. Emily, welcome to the show and thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you, Lauren. I'm so happy to be here. I can't believe how much we've accomplished in such a short time. Um, it's, it's very exciting times. It's amazing times and what a huge accomplishment. Now, I, I self-published my first book. It took about six months, um, but that was such a different experience. Tell me about what it actually takes because you're a hybrid between self-publishing and traditional publishing. So tell me a little bit about the process and, and how you move the stories through. Okay, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. And and I'll start by saying that that I think we've had so much success because writers recognize that there's a need for an option that is in between being a self-published author, which means doing everything yourself, um, educating yourself, usually on Google about all of the steps you have to take and all of the things you have to do. And traditional publishing, which requires that you have an agent in order to even get your manuscript in front of a traditional publisher. And traditional publishing is not what it once was. It is, um, well, there are only five traditional publishers left now. None of them are, are US owned anymore. They're all owned, yeah, by the Europeans and, and um, um, countries outside of the US. And when you publish with a traditional publisher, you're, you're not guaranteed a um, premium experience from beginning to end because they publish so many books that the new authors, the unknown authors, are assigned to the youngest editors, to the rookie editors, the rookie marketing managers. And we also found out this year during the um, Penguin Random House hearings about that merger that traditional publishers are spending less than 2% of their revenue each year on marketing, which means that really new authors have to market their own books um, with a traditional publisher. So all of this has helped hybrid publishing because we positioned ourselves in between that self-publishing experience and the traditional publishing experience. And at Bold Story Press, all of my team are uh, have 20 plus years of experience in the traditional publishing world. And so we are, we're the experts that you wouldn't get to work with in traditional publishing. Um, and, and in an environment that is so different because the author keeps their copyright, the author has veto power on decisions. We've, we've constructed this um, experience for our authors where they really do drive um, the, the big decisions, you know, in the publishing process. Of course, if we don't agree with them, we are very vocal about that, you know, and we prefer that our authors take our advice, but in the end, it is, it is their decision. So it's been really an incredible two plus years. Um, and, and we, I think it's the universe. I'm not, I'm not sure why or how, but the universe has sent us these authors who are so awesome and we love working with them so much. So I'm very grateful. Tell us about some of your authors. Tell us about some of your stories. We have a 
um, a new, the first book in a series called The Anecdotes, which is a, a book written for middle school students. And it's, um, the, the, the series will be a series um, that comes from STEM content. So it's exposing young people to science, technology, engineering, and math. And the stories center around these sixth and seventh graders stumbling on big problems that the, that the world is facing where, where they figure out the solution and implement the solution. And they're super fun, super um, uh, educational. They're exposing young people to these disciplines where we desperately need you know, more kids and especially young girls and women to um, to follow in in science, math and engineering disciplines. So that's an exciting book that um, that we're publishing. We have a new memoir by Lucienne Block. It is um, a memoir by essays and her writing is exquisite. Um, I'm just I'm so proud to publish this book. We really we, we're very excited about our list that's coming up. That's amazing. And you make such a good point that women's voices, this isn't just another dozen Jane Austens, not that that would be a bad thing. However, <laughs> women are telling stories and writing books from every vantage point. I know you've got the Chattahoochee cats who are out saving the world, um, you know, one little kitten game at a time. And then you've got the antidotes and you've got things like a memoir through essay. You've got uh, stories of women who had illness that influenced their lives that either got them moving and exercising or sharing their story in um, along came a stroke. Uh, so really just sharing stories from all of their lives and not something that I think when a listener would hear women's voices, you kind of think, well, what does that really mean? Well, and, and if you remember, the reason I started Bold Story Press was because um, we, the COVID had just started. We were in the middle or in the first six months of this pandemic and, and the world had ground to a halt. The, the politics in our world were insane. You know, people were just going crazy. Um, the global warming, the, the um, environment, you know, everything seemed to be um, just a mess. And I was so discouraged and I thought there has to be something that I can do to contribute to the solution of what's happening in the world. And, and that's when I decided, you know, so many women, young women today, still struggle with the same things we struggled with when we were starting out. You know, the people pleasing behaviors, the perfectionism, such that it stops us from taking risks. Um, and, and it hasn't changed enough, you know, since we were, the, our culture hasn't changed enough since we were young. And we still live in a world where the culture was penned, if you will, defined by, by men. Um, um, textbooks that are used in, in you know, grade school and high school, um, broadcast media, social media are still largely dominated by male figureheads. And that means that the world is still seen through that male lens. And until that changes, until there are an equal number of men and women who are making decisions and creating the culture, contributing to the culture, I think young women are not going to, to, to truly uh, own their power in the way that, that I, hope, I hope they all will um, own you know, in, in the coming years. And so that's really why I started Bold Story Press. I think the more stories written by women, the more experiences of, that women have and share with, with young women coming behind us, that the, that the more we will change the culture in which we live and make it a, a richer, 
maybe more functional um, uh, environment and system. And, and that's why I wanted to publish Women Only. Well, and I there's no doubt that publishing a book, it changes you. Putting yourself out in the public eye in that way, giving your voice to words on a page, there's no taking it back. It is, it is what you choose it to be, but on every level, you are giving control to the author. You're allowing them to keep the control of the story. I love that you're guiding them with experts along their way. But more than anything, I love that you're really pushing, pushing female voices to guide the conversation, to be an active part of every conversation. And I remember in one of our conversations and you said, well, women are still publishing under male names because they don't, you know, they don't feel comfortable putting themselves out there. I was shocked. Well, not only do they not sometimes feel comfortable putting themselves out there, but it's a proven fact that male authored books are more successful than female authored books. And, and the reasons for that are all about the biases that exist in the publishing world. But but the truth is you have a better shot at being successful with your book if there's a male name on the cover. How do you show up for a book signing? <laughs> what, what do you yeah, do? We are changing that, you know, um, slowly but surely we are changing that. And, and maybe maybe it's 26 books at a time, but but the world is ready for that change. We are. How so are you at a point where you're select you're being you're able to be selective, where you know that you can make a success of the story? Uh, you know, it's not that every book that comes along is is a great manuscript or even a great idea. How how do you go about your process of knowing? Well, we start with with quality. Um, <clears throat> if the writing is not of the quality <clears throat> that we, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that we require, we won't sign the book. And so that means that we, that we reject, you know, more than half of the manuscripts we receive. And then we're very honest with our authors about, about how to define success of an endeavor like this, because if you are only defining it by the amount of money you make from, from publishing, only defining it by the number of books you sell, then I don't recommend publishing to, um, to anyone really, because there are 2 million books being published every year now. And, and it makes it so challenging to get your book in front of your readers. To, to make sure that the people who want to buy your book will know it exists. And so we try to have very honest conversations with our authors about how they will define success, you know, at the end of the process. And, you know, I'm thinking of a, of a specific title right now. Catherine Hand wrote a beautiful memoir about making the movie A Wrinkle in Time. And, and she had to overcome tremendous fear. She had to draw on courage she didn't know she had in so many instances in this story and in the process of publishing this story, where, where I think at times she surprised herself about how courageous she was, you know, to, to step out into the world and put, put her beautiful story into the world. Um, and, and one of the, the things that we talked about, Catherine and I and, and many of my authors, is what if, what if 200 women read your book and you in some way touch them, you, you change their life in some way, maybe, maybe some tiny way, but you have some impact in their life. Is that success for you? You have to think about all of the ways you will measure success because becoming a New York Times bestseller in today's market is very, very hard. Yeah. So, well, even when I published initially in 2002, um, 
And I went out on book tour and I was speaking at bookstores and synagogues and churches and public schools and anyone who would have me. <laughs> yeah, which is great. Yeah, yeah. Which- Great, except, you know, you do, there is a bit of a reality check. There could be five people in the audience. There could be my mother. There could be, (laughs) there could be a hundred people and, and you really never knew, but you're right. There are even today, especially today, so many other ways to determine your success. But if you don't think about that in advance, you are setting yourself up for failure, no doubt. Yeah. And when you let the world define success for you, that's a lose-lose game, right? Um, you have to decide why you want to why you want to undertake this huge uh, project, and whether or not you will take joy from engaging in the process and from creating this book, and then and then decide, you know what what success looks and feels like after the book is published instead of letting others tell you, oh, you only sold X number of books. Well, I guess you weren't very successful. I don't, don't accept that. And I always said my books did what I did. That if I showed up, the books showed up. And if I didn't show up, I could send the books ahead. (laughs) You know, there, there were things that I could do, but the truth was the first day when I opened that box of the first box of books and you pull it out and you look at it and you're like, oh my God, I did this. Yeah. That's awesome. It is mm-hmm. awesome. It's really awesome. Emily, how can our viewers find you? And what questions should they be asking themselves before they do reach out? I think, you know, the most important question is, do you have a story to share with others in the world that you think will in some way improve their lives? And and maybe that's just by entertaining them. And maybe that's by inspiring them or, um, or pushing them to ask, you know, some questions of themselves. I don't, I know so few people in the world who would not answer yes to that question. And so if you do answer yes to that question, you have to decide, you know, will it give me joy to to write this book and then to go through this process of publishing? And if so, you know, start, start exploring what your options are because anyone can do this. Truly anyone can publish a book. Anyone can self publish a book and And so if your answer is yes to that question, I think that that you owe it to yourself and and to the world to find out what's involved in bringing your story to others and and pursue that. And they can find you at? At uh, emily at boldstorypress.com or you can go to our website at boldstorypress.com where we have free webinars every month to talk to writers and authors, potential authors, about what your options are for publishing um, and how one goes about about figuring that that piece out. So we would love to see all of the writers out there at one of our webinars or just reach out to me directly. That's wonderful. And I know they will because like you, I believe everyone has a story to tell and it's a legacy project. It really is. It's something that will change lives long after we're all gone. So thank you for doing this. Thank you for being amazing and spotlighting amazing people and helping them make their lives better for all of us. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And we'll be right back.